best. Here he comes, here come the 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 West. Chat at beyond, look around like who's next. I cannot do second best. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Bloody Whistle Podcast. Uh, today is time for our fourth for long segment. So today's special, this today's show, sorry, is going to be a discussion on the quarterbacks in the NFL. The quarterback is the most important position in the NFL. We've seen that in the last, well, we've known that all the time. There's been some debate about whether other positions have become more important, but um, in, obviously we can't realize that at the end of the day, the quarterback is what matters. Um, but before we get in, we're just going to quickly, briefly discuss what's happening today in the NFL as of week 13. Um, well, obviously, we're getting towards the business end of the season, and it's about now that all the it's about now the playoff picture starts to get a bit more clearer. Uh, so, what we're going to do, we're going to briefly go through what's been happening lately, and give just give you a picture of the league as it stands right now. So, if the season ended today. This would be pretty much your playoff teams. Uh, in the AFC, the number one seeds would be the Cincinnati Bengals with the Broncos second seed, the Patriots third seed, and the Colts the four seed. Those would be your four division winners. And the wild cards would be the fifth seed would be the Kansas City Chiefs and the sixth seeds would be the New York Jets. So if the likes of the Steelers would miss out, the likes of the Bills would miss out, and also the likes of the Texans would miss out. So... That's the AFC. The AFC, obviously, I think in the next four games, we'll realise exactly what's going on and how that's going to take shape. Over in the NFC, the unbeaten, still unbeaten Carolina Panthers, we're going to talk about those and then more later on, are the number one seeds, the number one team in the NFL. They're still undefeated, 12 0. And they would be the number one seeds, followed by the second seeds, Cardinals, the third seeds, Packers, and the four seeds, Redskins, which is a shocker. Uh, those are your four division winners as it stands right now, division leaders, should I say. And your fifth seeds would be the Vikings, and the sixth seeds would be the the resurgent Seahawks, who actually who trashed the Vikings yesterday. So that's how the the NFC looks like. And thing is with the NFC, there's a lot of teams who could miss out. We're going to talk about the NFC, the NFC East last, but at this moment in time, uh, the Buccaneers, the Falcons, and yeah, are the only teams pretty much who could have a say in anything to be a wild card. That's as of as um in regards to the NFC East, you have the Redskins, the Eagles, and the Giants, and I've. Funny enough, the Cowboys are still in it. As of recording this now, and it's before the Monday night game, so by the time you listen to it, you probably would have known what's happened between the Cowboys, as as the Cowboys take on the Redskins at FedEx Field. So, a uh, just to let you know, Cowboys win will have the one game behind the division leaders, and pretty much like <laughs> with so much to play for this, it's just crazy. But yeah, today isn't a discussion about the playoffs. Today is a discussion about the quarterbacks in the NFL right now. It's been a it's been a weird year. It's been a really weird as it stands right now. Um, we've come to realise, you know, we had a brief discussion about whether or not players like JJ Watt or well, players like the or Revis or running backs or other positions, basically other, other star players aside from quarterbacks, you know, have more of an impact than, you know, than let's just say like an average quarterback able to do. We realised that no matter how amazing players like JJ Watt, JJ uh, Watt are, like players like JJ Watt are, it's, you still need a quarterback, to, a quarterback, you know, to drive your team to the playoffs, to drive your team down on a postseason run, even to the Super Bowl. Like, the Texans have an unbelievable athlete, an unbelievable, like, an unstoppable piece to this in the shape of J.J. Watt. But we've come to realise if you don't have an an, an, an adept quarterback, a quarterback capable of not making mistakes, you know, carrying your team, then you're not going to get far. And the Texans right now are 6-6. Six and six. They lost yesterday against the Bills in a game where they probably could have won if they had a better quarterback than Brian Hoyle. I'm not saying Brian Hoyle's horrible, but he's not a QB that's going to lead your team on a playoff run. We know we've, we've seen we've seen his ceiling. His ceiling is not high. We know exactly what he is. A player that you know is, I think, it'll be doing. It'll be with him a great. Will be I'm giving it. It'll be a great compliment to call him a, a game manager because he's not even that. He's just a he's just a capable quarterback who can make throws when it matters. But he's definitely prone to mistakes. And on the other side, like I said on the other side, you've got someone like JJ Watt. JJ Watt deserves. A um, it deserves a better quarterback than the likes of Brian Hoyle. It deserves a better quarterback than they've had, like you know, Ryan Mallet. So far, played the season as well. So it's a case of no matter how great you are as a defensive player, no matter how great you are, even as a as a, as a non quarterback player, you still need a quarterback to drive it. And that's where the discussion stems from. And we're going to start with like with the you know with the new general QBs. And it's like these days, 
do you need a quarterback that's going to be drafted and start straight away? We've seen, like, in, you know, like, let's say the past decades where quarterbacks will be drafted and I'll probably spend a year, two or three years studying, you know, being an understudy. We've seen, you know, the likes of Rogers, we've seen Brady do it. Um, we've seen a lot of quarterbacks just, you know, pretty much learn a position and then come in and pretty much just um, be effective when they get because they've had, they've had years to learn from, let's say, you know, if from legends like, you know, like Brett Favre and the others. But these days, quarterbacks are drafted and expected to come in straight away. Look at it, like, look at this, look at this year's draft, um, like just the 2015 draft, Marcus Mariota and Jameis Winston are both drafted and thrown straight into the deep end. They've had to learn from the get-go. There's no, there's no, they, yeah, they're pretty much lambs to the slaughter. There's no, you know, there's no, okay, cool, um, we'll give you a year to learn a position and then we're going to throw you in. No, you got to be able to be ready to play off the get-go. And I think that's kind of changed this current group of young quarterbacks. If you look at the young quarterbacks now, They've all had. They've all had to pretty much. They've all had to learn the hard way. Um, like they were, you know, the, the most talked about QB at the moment is Cam Newton. Cam Newton had to learn the hard way. Cam Newton, obviously, in his first two, three years, first, fair enough, you know, he put up some insane numbers, but he was never that elite quarterback. And now it's only now that you know he can take a claim for being you know an elite quarterback. But like I said, let's let's concentrate on the on the, on the young QBs. We've seen, like I said, we talked about Mario, we talked about Winston. Um, we've seen Manziel. Manziel is the type of quarterback who probably could have done with, you know, a year, a year learning the position, which he did, to be honest. He spent a lot of last year learning position, but then it gets to the point where you need game time. And through thoughts of his home and maybe his team and people around him, like, you know, he's, that's not, he's not being able to, you know, to just live up to the expectations. Fair enough, Manziel isn't the best quarterback, but he just needs playing. He just needs playing time. And what's going on right now? The Browns is doing them a great disservice, and they need a quarterback. They desperately need a quarterback because of the politics going on in that organization. You just can't get Manziel to have a decent run enough, you know, to even just just learn. He's definitely improved from last season. You can see that the game in a, in a few games in a small amount of games that playing time inside the season. You can see that Manziel's improved, but he's definitely not the finished article. Um, we can keep going. Players like um, Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles had, I think, it was probably half a season as a, as, as as a redshirt freshman. And you know they sat him and they realized you know what, um, he probably was better than you know our starting quarterback. So they're throwing him in. And you know, in all honesty, he's getting better and better. He's getting better. Blake Bortles is getting better. He's not. He's not right now. He's nowhere near the finished articles. But he is a quarterback who a lot of the teams right now call use the likes of. Um, the Texas will probably use someone like Bay Balls. Do you know what I mean? The same division, Texas could probably use someone like Bay Balls. Because he, he has a higher ceiling than the likes of Brian Hart. Brian, well, I already said of Brian Hart, you know what you're getting with him. So, yeah. Blake Balls is a quarterback who, he's not going to be like a future Hall of Famer, but he's a really, 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 he could be a really, a, a good QB to have on your team. But like I said with him, it's all about learning as you go along. Um, let's move on to Derek Carr. Derek Carr's first rookie season wasn't a remarkable, wasn't, you know, anything amazing, by any stretch, but this year he's come up leaps and bounds, and maybe you could say that's because he's got the weapons, like you know he's got Amari Cooper. Do you know what I mean? He's got he's got a decent running game. Maybe you could say that's the reason why. However, he's got to be able to make things like make good decision, make good throws, and he's done that a lot this season. Like Derek Carr is a QB that's probably surprised because I didn't think he'd be as good as he was as he is now this quickly. And he's impressed me. I think if there's a if there's an if it was an award for my sophomore QB of the year, I did I'll give it to, um, to Derek Carr because in his second season he's he's come up leaps and bounds. And I think the Raiders have finally got a Q, you know, franchise QB, a QB which they can build around, and they started to do so. I think they've definitely got the the the, um, the players on offense. They got you know Tavis Murray, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's Tavis Murray. They got uh, Amari Cooper, obviously. You know who's probably going to he's he's could be. He's not there for rookie of the year, you know. Obviously, fair enough. He's had a he's had a quiet two years because teams have started to realize that Green has started to double up on him. But you got the time. You got um, Amari Cooper. You got um, you got former first round pick uh, Michael Crabtree, who soon to have found his found his feet like out, out there in Oakland, across the other side of the of the bay. And the defense, they got you know they got Khalil Mack on defense. They got decent number. They got decent players on defense. They got Charles Woodson, who's still you know. Who's defying, defying, I don't know, defying just like physics, defying nature, I think, by, you know, playing at such a high level, at such, you know, at such an old age. But yeah, let me, let's not get too deep into the discussion. But yeah, the Raiders have someone in Derek Carr which they can carry and build in the franchise around. And I think in a year or two, this team could be a player of contender. And like I said, you know, there's more players, there's other players that we've talked about. Um, Mario, Mario has been playing. I think Mario has been playing 
accidentally. You know, you missed a game or two for injury, but I think about the, I think the Titans have finally the Titans have finally got a quarterback. You know, where they can shake him, they can build around. You know, they've they've seen the likes of Charlie Whitehurst and all this other play. You know, Zach Mettenberger coming in through the doors, and he's not been the answers. So obviously now they finally find someone to build a franchise around, and that's what it is. You just got to have a QB to build a franchise around, and then the Titans have that, and so do the the uh, the Bucks have that in the shape of um, of Jameis Winston. See all these young QBs coming up. Uh, and I mean, let's, let's not forget Tyra Taylor. Tyra Taylor is doing, doing, doing good things out in Buffalo Bills. There's a lot of young QBs around. Obviously, once this, genera- once this current generation of elite QBs pass the baton over, you can rest easier for each other knowing that, you know, we've got a lot of good crop of young QBs. Young QBs you can build franchises around, which is what's going on right now in the NFL. Um, and let's just move on to QBs who aren't, be haven't been so lucky. I'm not talking about young QBs. I'm talking about injured QBs at the moment. So the likes of um, Tony Romo, Peyton Manning, Joe Flacco. Those are those are all very good QBs. Very good QBs who have succumbed to you know frustrating injuries. Romo, I think if you wanted to you know highlight the argument about how important QBs are this season, you need to go look at Tony Romo. Tony Romo got injured in week three, if I'm not mistaken. And I was week two or week three. I'm not. Uh, I'm not from uh, week two. Sorry, uh, in a game which they beat the Eagles, I think. At least double check on that. And the Cowboys went on a seven game losing run. Right between them, right? they lost seven games. The seven games they had about them, they lost. And they're all games which I think, aside from the Patriots game, the Cowboys probably could have and should have won six of those games. Six out of seven games they could have won and would have been right there in the thick of it in a, in a very very poor NFC East. That the, the Cowboys have just been a quarterback away from being a playoff team. Even now that Tony Romo's Tony Romo's going to succumb to injury again, the Cowboys are currently three and eight, but can still win the division and still make the playoffs. That just shows. No, forget the forget the forget the quality of the NFC side. Shows how important it is to have a serviceable QB because the likes of Massel, um, sorry, Matt Castle and Brandon Whedon just haven't been good enough. They're decent backups, but they're backups for a reason. Those players are back on three because, you know, they, they are not the calibre of starting QBs. Fair enough, Castle, you know, was part of that Patriots team who went um, 11, I think it was 11 and 5, while Brady was that like, injured. However, it's, it's, he's not a quarterback who can win you games. He's a quarterback. He's more, him and Brandon Wiener, the quarterback, someone like this, and made mistakes. Fair enough, Roma, Roma made a lot of errors again in his comeback in his second game in, after injury, comeback from injury against the Panthers. However, <clears throat> I will still take Romo any day over the likes of Castle Wiener because Romo can actually win you the game as much as he can lose it. He can definitely win the game. So, um, yeah, Romo's been injured. Flacco's, you know, the Ravens are already struggling. Ravens literally, I've literally had nobody. They lost, they lost, um, they lost Suggs earlier on. They've lost other pieces. They've, they, they, they lost Flacco and their starter running back in the same game, which just goes to show that, you know, that injuries can really, like, derail a season, especially when it's your quarterback. The Ravens weren't going anywhere anyway. And now they've lost Flacco. They're pretty much tanking the season. Uh, we've, we've seen Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck missed many games this season for injury. Uh, with Matt Hassel back out, you know, at the Colts. At the Colts are six on six. Fair enough. The Luck, you know, the Luck lost. I think Luck went lost. Lost quite. He lost more games than he won while he was fit. While he was playing anyway. While he was fit, he was fit to play anyway. But regardless, I take a healthy Andrew Luck, Andrew Luck over a very aging Matt Hassel back any day of the week. So the Colts, the Colts are there suffering a quarterback like injuries. We've seen, we've seen the issues with Peyton. Peyton. Hasn't been the same for pretty much 18 months now. Hasn't been the same since, probably since that loss in the Super Bowl against Seattle. Just hasn't been the same. You know, the age is creeping up on him. He's not the same. His body just doesn't work. And he doesn't seem to fit. Like, the, his, the state of his body doesn't seem to fit uh, the system out in Bron- um, in Denver. You know, that rollout offense where he, you need a mobile QB to make the offense the offense stick, which is why we're seeing Brock Osweiler coming in right now, who's another young QB, should I say, who's, who's actually, who's who they've groomed to be managed replacement. And it seems to feel like they've had the luxury, to it. They, they've had that luxury because they've had someone like Peyton Manning. And so they've had to, you know, they've been able to sit as well and let him learn. And we've seen him, you know, he's won two, he's won two, he's won three games, sorry, since he's, and since he's filled in for Manning while Manning's been out injured. So yeah, um, Manning's been out. And we've, fair enough, you know, the, the Broncos can rely on a very, 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 very good defense. However, <clears throat> That still doesn't negate the fact that the quarterback is probably the most important position in football. Well, it is the most. It's not probably it is the most important. Football. It just underlines that fact, that, that 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 opinion because fair enough, the Broncos have a good enough defense to carry on winning games throughout the whole season. But there's going to come a point in time where 
they're going to be engaged, you know, in a in a in a back to back playoff game, and they're going to need a quarterback with the right arm, with the right, you know, with the, with the right IQ, with the right QBIQ to be able to, you know, to be able to win a game. And <clears throat> whether or not that's Osweiler, we'll have to find out and see because that's with the Broncos right now are the second seed and they're heading straight to playoffs. So, like I said, it underlines the point of you know, like court, the quarterback position is the most valuable in this sport. And like I said, regardless of what you say, is there's no way you can prove otherwise. Fair enough. We've seen teams, like I said, we've seen teams in the past go make it or go all this ball with you know with like decent QBs. It's all like Rex Grossman take the Bears to the Super Bowl all those years, of course, against uh, Peyton Manning's and that post Colts. But at the end of the day, they they eventually you know they eventually lost that because obviously the team they were facing had a better quarterback. That's just how it is. Um, but on the subjects of um, quarterbacks, your quarterbacks injured. Your quarterbacks are injured. We've got quarterbacks who are out of favor, and uh, the likes Colin, Colin Kaepernick. <clears throat> Uh, for you, he was bent. Colin Kaepernick, Kaepernick was one throw away from being a Super Bowl champion. He was one throw away from being a Super Bowl champion. And now he's pretty much going to be tossed out of San Francisco. He was dropped for Blake Ball. Uh, not Blake Ball, sorry. Um, he was dropped for... Oh, what's his name? Oh, well, like, I'll come back to me. For Blaine Gabbert, sorry, yeah. He was dropped for Blaine Gabbert, which, is, which in itself has to be one of the most... I don't know, deflating experiences ever. Blaine Gabbert, for all you don't know, how was the former number one over, number one pick for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And obviously, you know, he didn't make, not the Jacksonville Jaguars, sorry. Um, but he, um, sorry, he didn't make the cut. Wrong team, sorry. He didn't you know, quite make the cut. So he was tossed out. And, uh, sorry, I, I, let me just correct myself. He was the former pick for the, for the Jacksonville Jaguars, sorry, number one pick. And he didn't quite make the cut and he was tossed out. And he found his way in San Francisco as a backup for Colin Kaepernick. Now, that Kaepernick was, you know, he's been dropped. Gabbard, literally, he's literally looked a lot better than Kaepernick has all season. This is Dan Kaepernick, who was a phenomenon just a few years ago. You know, he revolutionized the, you know, the way the quarterbacks, the quarterbacks, you know, the, the whole quarterback position. Everyone thought maybe this is the future of the quarterbacks. And then obviously, we've come to realize that defenses have adapted. And Kaepernick, who his legs were better than his arms, you know, it's all caught up with him now. Like I said, he was, he was a one pass away from being a football champion. And now he's back up to Blaine Gabbert. It boy, he's out for the season now, sorry. Season ending injury, which, you know, they put him on season ending injury. And now he's out for the season. And he's probably going to be looking for a new team. And it's crazy to think that somebody, somebody can drop so badly. And which has happened. It's happened to him. And we can say the same about Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan, and I, I, I like the Falcons started 6-0. The season, and they are now six and six. No, sorry, they started. Sorry, let me repeat that. They started five and zero the season, and are now six and six. So they've lost. They started. They you know they won their first five, and now they've lost the fact that they've lost. They lost five in a row, and maybe we're starting to see the real Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan is not a bad quarterback by any stretch. He's a very he's a, he's a very good quarterback to have, but it's always that same issue: is when it matters most, can he win it? And right now, the Falcons are not even a case of the playoff run because we've seen Matt Ryan in the playoffs and he's not being able to do it at all. The, 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 the Falcons have had some decent playoff runs in the last five years. Matt Ryan just hasn't had been able to do it. And now that, you know, he's deprived of, you know, Roddy, Roddy White since I disappeared, you know, he's got Devontae Freeman, he's got Julio Jones, but it's hard to see that when it comes to it, he just can't really do what's required of him. And may, I don't know whose fault that is. It could be his, it could be the coach's, but it just doesn't seem to be playing as well as he once was. And you could say, and he's not alone in that. Obviously, we've seen the likes of Sam Bradford. Sam Bradford is a, you know, is a full one on one overall pick. Obviously, which, you know, he's succumbed to a few worrying injuries, you know, a few like, you know, probably like career and then injuries, career and knee injuries, but he's come back. But regardless, you see Sam Bradford now, maybe it's a new system. He just doesn't look like. A quality starting quarterback, and when you look at the really, when you look around the league, there are probably five, six teams whose starting quarterbacks aren't up to scratch. And like I said, Kaepernick, well, Kaepernick's out now. Ryan just seems to be playing really poorly. You've got um, Sam Bradford. We had Matthew Stafford at one point after the Lions, you know, Lions poor so earns it start. We had, at one point, Matthew Stafford, who you know looked like he was part of that group, but he's come up leaps and bounds for, for a new coordinator. You know, they got rid of uh, Joe Lombardi, put in Jimbo Kua, and we've seen how Matt Ryan. Sorry, Matthew Staff, sorry, has been able to go back to what he does best. The Lions probably weren't... In fact, the Lions were a playoff team last season. This season, they're not completely out of the picture, but they're pretty much done. You could just pretty much say they're pretty much done. So, yeah, it's a case of he's come up... I think he's come back from a very, very poor start, and he's shown exactly why he was, you know, a former number one pick and why he took his team to, you know, to a playoff run last season. And... 
like I said, going back on the current, going back on our points, you can't then tell me that you know the quarterback isn't the most important position of football, regardless of how good players like JJ Watt are or like Robert Grob Gronkowski are. Those players are phenomenal. They're phenomenal athletes. They are they're incredible. You know, they're once in a generation type athletes. But however, in the same breath, they are not more important than the quarterback, the person who the person capable of winning you championships, the person you know who can win you games, they're not important more important than them. We look at look at all the top teams. Um, look at all the top quarterbacks and then, you know, and look at the, the way the teams have performed over the last season, the last few seasons. We've seen um we've seen Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, we could say Peyton Manning to certain extent, Russell Wilson, all those all those players there are top quality quarterbacks whose teams have been able to build around them and who's all three of them have won quarter or have won um Super Bowls in the last five, you know, in the last six or so years. So it goes to show you just how important the position is. And I want to end this I want to end this podcast on a bright note, on a, on a, on a bright some notes. Right now we're seeing the resurgence of Cam Newton. I think Cam Newton right now is at that middle point where he's not part of the elite group of, you know, French and QBs and he's no longer considered a young QB. I think he's five years in now to his career now, if I'm not mistaken. And Cam Newton looks like one of the best QBs on the planet at the moment. The Panthers are twelve and zero, and they're playing literally amazing football. Cam Newton has thrown for five touchdowns in each of his last two games. He's running, you know, he's easy. His ability to, I think, he used to be known as a running QB, and I think a lot of quarterbacks these days come out of college seem to have that title as running QBs who have a decent arm on them. But Cam Newton has, you know, kind of flips it now. His legs are no longer his best weapons; it's now his arm. Not only that, his QB smarts has increased, has improved as well. He's able to make better decisions than he has in the past. He's not, you know, he's still throwing interceptions, but I think right now he's playing at a level which surprised me. Even we've always known Cam Newton was a good player. I remember obviously in his days at Auburn when he played in that college champion, in that BCA champion. I think it was that against. I'm sure it was against um, Oregon, where he, you could just see that this, this this kid was special. You can see that he was a special talent, and his first three or four years in the NFL. You could see that you know what, you know what he's a good quarterback. He's probably going to be you know a middle you know a middle of the park type quarterback. Nothing special. That's what he looked at for the first <clears throat> for his first five or so years in the NFL. And now he seems to have had an amazing off season, and he's become like a front runner for the league MVP. I think after last, after yesterday's game, he's up there as you know probably like I think he's a, he's a favorite for league MVP. People will say okay, Brady doesn't have um doesn't have Gronk. He doesn't have Edelman. All he has is Amendola and the likes of uh, Brandon LaFell and Keyshawn Johnson. Not Keyshawn Johnson. Um, I forgot his name now. But yeah, regardless, you could you could point to the fact that Brady has no one to throw to. But then in the same breath, Cam Newton is only throwing to Greg Olsen. Front is who's who's Ted King Jr. Who's who's Funches? He's lost. You know, he lost Kelvin Benjamin before the season even start. Cam Newton is literally throwing to Scrubs, and so is Brady. They're both throwing to Scrubs. So at the end of the day, you can't really use an argument as Brady has nobody to throw to in a discussion because they're both thrown to pretty much to pretty much nobody's. So I think Newton is at such an incredible season that if he doesn't win the league MVP this season, I think for what he's done and for the improvement he's made, for the improvement he's made, for what he's been doing, how he's carried his team. Like, because they haven't necessarily beaten Scrubs. They've, you know, they've, they've beat the Packers. Do you know what I mean? It's not as if they've beaten Scrubs on Hungary. Fair enough, you know, they've had an easier, they've had an easier run than some teams, but he's beaten some good teams. So... I can only, I can't stress enough just how well he's played. And as I said, I want to end this. I want to end this podcast on a positive note. And I think Cam Newton, for all that he's done, I think there's all the points he gets. If the if I think the Panthers right now are probably they they got they've got a good chance of going unbeaten. You know, it's not out of the question. They've got an easier run over the last um over, over the remaining four games than you know than most teams. So don't be shocked. If they, like, I think yesterday, the game against the Saints yesterday was that banana peel game where they could have easily lost. Obviously, Newton pulled out the bag with his touchdown pass. Could have been, it could have been less close if Ted King Jr. hadn't dropped so many passes, but he still managed to win the game. So, I think in terms of the regular season, like the Panthers are pretty much already there. You know, they're already close to the side. They're definitely in the playoffs. We're going to get the number one seed. We're going to see Cam Newton. See if Cam Newton can actually transfer what he's done in the in the regular season. The playoffs, the playoffs are a completely different game. 
But regardless, like I said, he deserves this league MVP. I'm not just saying because and he's he's been criticised for his attitude in the past, unfairly in my eyes. You know, people saying, you know, why does he have that tower of his head, you know, kind of gives us a wrong impression, which is, I think it's been bullshit. He's, um, his dress sense, he's, he's been, he's been criticised he's for things like his touchdown celebrations, which I think have been a joke. You know, he's been criticised by, I think, because I've, I've stressed how being a black QB may be the reason behind that. But I don't want this to become a race war, any sort of race issue. I think we need to realise that Kevin Newton's a special talent. He's come up leaps and bounds, and he deserved this this year's league MVP. Um, I'm going to leave it on that note. Um, it's been our first podcast in a while, so I do hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, we need to try and get a bit more regularly, but then hopefully we'll have another one for you by next week where we'll discuss the playoffs in even bigger, you know, in more detail because we might get a clear understanding of what's going on. So, um, on that note, Gonna have to love you and leave you, and I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you.